Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearls of, Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Coming to you on the fly. No frills here, buddy. We don't have any fancy backgrounds or editing or nothing. This is one take. Do it from the top. Trading players videos. Also, we're going to be doing UFA stuff, hockey draft stuff. I've been studying hockey for many years. I do my own show. I um, if you haven't heard me before, you'll find that my predictions are usually fairly accurate and it's a lot of fun. That's the main thing. We, we just did uh, Debrinket. You might want to check that video out. There's news out there that Debrinket could be available. Same as Malkin did that. Uh, we're possibly going to do Forsberg in the future because it looks like he might be available as a free agent. And JT Miller we just did. And today we're looking at some reports out there that the New Jersey Devils are thinking about trading their second overall pick in the 2022 draft. Now, Mr. Fitzgerald has, Tom Fitzgerald has, has kind of said that it was always available always. And most general managers say that. But this time... I think it's, there's a little more to it than that. He's also mentioned several things like we've been rebuilding for a while. Um, we think we're ready to move forward now. He's been saying a lot of talk where it sounds like the rebuild is getting a little impatient. And they could use some definite pieces there in New Jersey. So we're going to look at what pieces they may be looking to add. Who maybe looking to want that second overall and what they may have to offer Washington and what is the most likely team that might be able to acquire it. Um, so if you're enjoying this fine content, sub yourself up because we do this regularly. All you got to do is hit the sub button, touch it, makes you feel good on your inside. If you're on Facebook right now listening to this, you just go over to YouTube, uh, search Pearl of Wisdom, Sub yourself up to me because you and you can comment in the comment section. And tell me how crazy you are. I get a lot of people that aren't too happy with some of the stuff I do. And I don't mind that at all. Roast me, man. Or don't. Appreciate it. Whatever you want to do. I'm fine. I'm a big boy. You don't hurt my feelings at all. I don't get offended by anything. You can be as rude as you want. Because it's hockey. You ever watch hockey players play? talk to each other does it sound like they're giving each other pats on the back and saying good go buddy no this is hockey go at her i don't mind at all all right and shell pearl of wisdom show check it out i do that from time to time i also do uh peyton on the radio i do live streams with them during games on the analysis he's the play-by-play -play guy amazing play-by-play -play guy you want to check it out all part of the steel flyers all sports network it's not a flyers network it's an all sports network. All teams, all sports. Okay, let's check it out. All right, there's a good looking guy right there, Mr. F Tom Fitzgerald, who, by the way, I really respect. I think he's doing an amazing job with the New Jersey Devils. Um, and I also think it would be a good time for them to consider trading this number two pick. Although that pick is going to be amazing. Uh, either Mr. Wright or probably Slavkovsky. Um, Slavkovsky, if you don't know, has been all over the board in draft from, from scouts. Many scouts believe he could be something like a Rantanen. Other scouts believe he could be like a Nichiskin. Um, so it's, there's varying and it really depends on what New Jersey thinks this player can be and, and when he can be, what he can be. Most scouts do say that he probably won't preach, preach his peak for two more years, which could be what New Jersey is looking at here is even if he is going to be somebody as good as say Rantanen on the top end or close to it. Uh, possibly then we would want somebody for now because we think we're ready now. And we'll look at the New Jersey Devils lineup and what they may need and whether they are ready right now. Um, so, but first of all, this is the article from Ryan Nov 
Novozinsky from the New Jersey Advanced Media or NJ.com. I think they're one of the best New Jersey coverages there are out there. I love them. Great writer. Um, the Devils and their fans are overjoyed that they got the second overall pick. But according to Sportsnet's Elliot Friedman, now Elliot Friedman's been taking a lot of flack lately. But honestly, I don't know. When, I, when Elliot Friedman says stuff, it's usually fairly accurate. Um, sometimes it's a little bit off here and there. But he is part of Sportsnet. And Sportsnet really is wary of putting out false information. It ruins our reputation. I don't see them doing it very often, and I don't see Elliot Freeman doing it very often. Devil's Brass are likely to meet about a possible trade in the coming weeks. In this meeting, New Jersey will come up with a list of players they could be interested in acquiring via trade for their first rounder. Uh, Devil's manager Tom Fitzgerald has been vocal about his desire to potentially trade his first rounder for weeks. Yes, he has. He said many things. I said this two drafts ago when we had three first round picks. I'm open to whatever can help it, our team improve. Fitzgerald said before the Devils discovered they received the number two pick. If that is using a pick like that, whatever it may be, to help bring in a player we know and feel will have impact to our results. That we are looking for absolutely. Fitzgerald's comments came before the team leaped to having fifth to second. Two is a huge pick. From what I've heard, the Devils have told people that they're not saying no to trading the pick. And like I said, he said he did that a couple of years ago and he never did trade the pick. But I remember that and it was a one-off statement. He didn't keep on going. He's been going on about this for quite some time. It seems that he, this year, that he has been making it more known that that pick is available than any year that I can remember in the past. Other times it was just a one-off. Of course, somebody will ask him, yeah, of course we'll do it. Any general manager would say, we're not, we're not going to not listen to people. You never know what they might be offering. But this time it seems a little more oomphish. So, Let's look at the New Jersey Devils and why they may be wanting to trade that pick. Okay, the New Jersey Devils this year, as you know, missed the playoffs fairly considerably, but they did take a step up in the offensive side of their game, and they had a lot of players solidify themselves as NHLers and even stars like Jesper Bratt, Jack Hughes, although injured for part of the year, just was an over-a-point-a-game center. He's hitting his stride at 21 years old. Nico Heischer, although injured again, but still not too bad. 60 points in 70 games. Great two-way player. And, of course, we know Dawson Mercer had a fantastic year uh, as a 20-year-old as well. So the line, Jesper Boak was stepped up. Yanni Kalkinen probably had a bit of a down year. But Miles Woods coming back from energy or injury. Michael McLeod looks really good. And their defense... As far as I'm concerned, and they still got work to do, don't get me wrong, they weren't defensively sound by any stretch. But a lot of big improvements on that side of things, especially with guys like Jonas Sieg Siegenthaler, Kevin Ball is getting ready, Ty Smith is getting to be 22 right now. These are guys that are getting close to their prime, and they already have Dougie Hamilton and Ryan Graves, who I thought were wonderful acquisitions for them. Now, the biggest problem, I think, that in New Jersey, as it was all year, was goaltending. They, they were trying to use goaltenders that, um, because Blackwood and Bernier were injured, were very green. Although, Nico Dawes did look like he could be a future number one for them. Probably going to go out and look for a goaltender this year. And probably New Jersey is thinking, you know what, we are stacked. Like, you're not going to get more to this roster as far as young players are concerned. They have plenty of young players now. One, there's two things that stand out, goaltending and a big shooter. They're, they don't really have that big shooter. And I think that's what they're kind of, would be kind of looking for, for their second overall. Now, personally, I would use it for a goaltender, but most teams won't do that. Um, I'd also like to see them get bigger on the wings. 
And when I say bigger, Pavel Zaka is big, but he doesn't play big. He may, he, they're going to have difficulty signing Pavel Zaka as well. I don't think they're very happy with what his uh, contract negotiations are turning out to be. Um, 2.25, they're gonna, they'll probably give him a, uh, his, uh, on the AV, they'll probably give him a qualifying offer. And I'm hearing just over and over again that, that it's, he's possible trade bait. So he could be used in the trade as well if they can get a guy that's big enough. And if they are really not happy with Zach, as it appears that they're not, that spot is going to have to be filled somehow as well. I'm sure they'll trade Pavel Zaka, maybe be able to recoup the first that they're going to trade here. They have many options because they have a lot of great, very good players on their roster. All right. So let's look at some teams that could strongly consider that second overall pick. And the first one we're going to look at is the Vegas Golden Knights. It has been well documented that the Vegas Golden Knights have cap problems. And guess what? It's not changing. $200,000 in cap space availability for this year. And they have Keegan Colasar to sign. It's not much. He's not going to cost much to sign, but he had a pretty darn good year. Wouldn't be un un unrealistic for him to ask for a million and a half, two million if they want to keep him in. And per personally, I think they should want to keep him in. He's a good, solid, big player that can provide a lot to your team. Nicholas Roy as well is also going to be commanding a fair, fairly big contract. They're restricted free agents. They have control, but um, it could become a fight if they have no Somebody could easily right now scoop down and even give those guys an offer. And what's Vegas going to do? You know, take the pick and move on. Matthias Janmark. I mean, there's a lot of holes to fill on this roster. Uh, Evgeny Dadunov, of course, almost they tried to trade him already. They may try to trade him yet, but that's going to end up giving them a pick. So they'll get $5 million in cap space if they can get that off the books. But if they could get a young player like Spadkowski, there has been talk that Montreal may not take right first overall, that player as well, who would be on their entry-level contract and maybe be able to play soon, fairly soon, I think Vegas would be interested in that. And you're asking, okay, well, so Vegas is interested in that. Who would they ask for in return? New Jersey. I think there's, I mean, I think they wouldn't mind having Max Pacioretty, but he's 33 years old. And, uh, you know, he's got a contract coming up here, right? It might be a little on the older side for them. And he also has a no movement clause that would be very difficult for him to get, uh, for them to get around. I would say Marcia Soul. Marcia Soul is a five team no trade clause, no trade list. Now, New Jersey could be on that list, but I think it's highly unlikely it would be. There's a lot of teams out there that, like Arizona, you know, there's a lot of teams they probably wouldn't want to go to that are worse off, San Jose Sharks, for instance, that are worse off as far as going to be contenders than the New Jersey Devils. New, um, assuming that he's not the New Jersey's not on his no trade list, I think this would be the player that maybe they may consider. Now, I don't think that would be the only part of the deal. I, I don't think I trade that second overall for just Marchessault, who's 31 years old, but he's a 30 goal scorer and he's super fast. He would be uh, amazing with. Hughes and stuff like that. Now, one of the factors I liked was having a guy with size. Marcheseau doesn't have size, but he doesn't back down from anybody. He's got tons of heart. Now, you could also get uh, Vegas's first round pick probably in 2023 in this deal. Yes, they have their first round pick in 2023. So you get another pick, you get Marcheseau. And you might even get, to tell you the honest truth, a guy like Dylan Coughlin. Dylan Coughlin, uh, big defenseman, 24 years old. He can play down 
good depth guy. New Jersey could always use some depth on the right-hand side. Something of that nature in this deal. Now, the question is, would I do this deal? I don't think so. I personally don't think so. Too, but I put it out there for Vegas fans and for New Jersey fans. What would you think? I mean, Marcia is a speed demon. He's going to definitely just keep on bringing all that speed to New Jersey. And it looks like New Jersey is obviously playing a type of game where they want speed, speed, speed. Now, they don't have, again, size up front is a bit of an issue for me. However, they compensate it with some amazing size on the D. 6'5", 220 Graves. Severson, 6'2", 205. Siegenthaler, 6'3", 210. Dougie Hamilton, 6'6". Kevin Ball, looks like he could be ready. 6'6", 216. So through all of this, it does seem to me that they are looking at uh, having super fast guys up front and some big size on, the, on, on D. So it may not matter to them as much as it would matter to me that Marcia so as smaller as small as he is. I don't think it's the most likely place where he could end up, but I do think Vegas would definitely consider having that cap space come off and them being able to, there's the other thing, they got a problem with Laner. Laner didn't sound happy on his way out. Um, and if they don't think he's the number one, or they're going to be problems, then they're going to have to move him out. They got to find a goaltender on top of it. They're going to even need more space. So I could see it happening. I don't know if I would do it. Tell me if you guys would do it. Sub up, Vegas fans. Tell me in the comment section of my YouTube channel whether you would do it or not. Uh, also, New Jersey fans, tell me if you like that idea. Next. Washington Capitals, and again, you know, just look at the cap space right away. You got eight million dollars in current cap space for their roster. Um, they got, they have, basically, their defense is shot. Uh, Justin Schultz is a UFA. Kempney is a UFA. Uh, Fair Harvey's Fair uh, Fairvery is going to have be a restricted free agent after next year. They got a lot of money to dole out to fill out this roster with $8 million. Now, and also, they're getting—they're not getting any younger. I mean, we go, we've got, how many times do you need to hear this if you're a Washington Capitals fan? 36-year-old Ovechkin, Backstrom's 34, TJ Oshie's 35. They're, they're going to have to have some players take over here soon. So what, what am I asking? What am I saying? Who would be the one that would be able to move on in this situation? <clears throat> I think if they're going to do something like this, New Jersey would be looking for a guy like Anthony Mantha. Big, big guy. He does have a great shot. He just hasn't been able to, but he hasn't been able to put it all together as far as a big shooter in, in the NHL. Uh, and a lot of that has been injury problems. But in 2018-19, when he was in Detroit, he was a 25-goal scorer. And it's just been injury problem, injury problem, injury problem every year since. And that would be the problem with this deal. Uh, it certainly wouldn't be the only thing that Washington would be giving up in this deal. But I think that's somebody like that is what New Jersey would be looking for. Tom Wilson. Uh, TJ Oshie's too old, Kuznetsov, I don't think that they would be looking that direction. Um, also, this is an interdivision play, so it would be a little bit on the difficult side to even think that they may do it. It wasn't my favorite of all the choices that they had, but Washington's got to find ways to get this cap space available because they got goaltenders they got to get rid of, or sign, or both. They got to get a goaltender. So you could be looking at, I don't think Anthony Mantha would be the only part. They would also give up their first round pick and whatever prospects you can find off their roster that you might be happy with. Uh, Hendrik Salapierre, somebody of that nature, Alexander Alexiev. Out of all the teams that would be offering here, I think this deal would probably be not 
very likely. But I had a lot of people ask them about the Washington Capitals. Because getting a guy like Svechkovsky, they could wait on him for a couple of years. But having a guy that could be a, a star that's controlled as far as salary is concerned because he would be on an entry-level contract, to them, to me, I think it would be invaluable to them. But I just, I don't know if they can put a package together good enough. Tell me what you think, Washington Capitals fans. Would you give up even what I'm saying, or would you give up more? What would you throw out to New Jersey for them to give up that second overall pick? All right, here's an interesting one. The Florida Panthers. And believe it or not, the Florida Panthers are actually getting some cap issues. Uh, significant cap issues, actually. Uh, Three million, almost four million in cap space. And, uh, you know, not likely Ben Chirot's coming back. Uh, they got to fill out the defense a little bit, though, with guys like possibly Robert Hag. Uh, there's been talk that they want to continue talking to Claude Giroux. I don't know how they could possibly do that. Uh, Mason Marchment, by the way, New Jersey fans, this could be the answer right here, and you don't need to trade anybody. Mason Marchment, just if you could, if they could find a way to get Mason Marchment, look at Mason Marchment right here. Florida's got to want to resign him, but they're, I mean, like I said, they're, they're capped out. Uh, he just had 47 points in 54 games. He's not the big shooter you're looking for, but he's actually what I would be looking for for New Jersey if it was me. He is a grinding, just nonstop, motor running, heart and soul, find a way to score, find a way to win type guy that everybody wants on their roster. And honestly, if I'm he's six four, that's the kind of guy I'd be looking for if I was New Jersey, to tell you the honest truth. And if I'm Florida, I'm looking for a way to sign him and maybe looking a different direction with some other player. Which leads me to what I'm about to say. Because they've only got three point four million, Sam Reinhardt, who they just picked up from Buffalo, and it's a wonderful luxury to have. But he has he doesn't have a no trade clause. And he fits here on the right hand side right now. But they could possibly sign Giroux for less than Sam Reinhardt and bring him in, bring him back because he wants to come back. Uh, and be able to fill out their roster a little bit. And he would be fantastic. As far as I'm concerned for New, Jer New Jersey, he's got an underrated shot at 33 goals last year. Fairly big, doesn't back down from anybody, plays a, a, a fantastic two-way game, very underrated. New Jersey can fit him under the cap, and Florida would get a guy like Svechkovsky who might be ready in a year or two, maybe even sooner, it's hard to say, or right, whatever, whatever whoever is available in that spot. And if they can sign Giroux instead of Sam Reinhardt for less than the six and a half that Sam Reinhardt is getting, that frees up a little space to maybe sign some other guys. Or, like I said, they can sign Mason Marchment and he can fill that spot until Slepkowski is ready. Lots of options for them. Um, I think this is one of the best choices out of all the teams here that would be able to do that. Um, you look at New Jersey, what Sam Reinhart would do for them. You got Dawson Mercer here. Uh, Sharon, he can, uh, uh, Jesper Bratt can be moved to the left side, play Sam Reinhart. To tell you the honest truth, Reinhart is an awesome center too. He can play the middle really, really well. So if Nico Heischer, who can, has shown to get injured, or Jack Hughes, who has also had his injury problems get injured, you can slot him down the middle. So there's many options for him. I think it's a great pickup for New Jersey. And if they are thinking that they're going to be ready sooner than a lot of people think, Sam Reinhardt's going to go a long way to bringing them there. I would give him up straight across. Second overall for Sam Reinhardt. He's only 26 years old. Still young enough for this team, but still has enough experience to help out the young guys. I love the play. I think Florida might be, you know, not really happy that they're giving up Reinhardt. But to get some cap space and to keep moving here 
and keeping that young player players flowing through so they don't go have to do a severe rebuild down the road, I think it'd be a good play. Also, you got to remember that Florida has Huberto to sign here right away. He's going to be demanding a lot of money um, 2023. So they got to look ahead that way as well. And I just think it's possible Sam Reinhart may not fit in the cap in the for cap space for them in the future. So that would be my guy there. Tell me what you think, Florida Panthers fans. We're just losing Sam Reinhart, getting that second overall pick. Do you agree with what I just said? New Jersey, do, would you love to have a Sam Reinhart for that second overall pick? I personally would. If I'm going to trade it, that's the kind of guy I'm looking for. Here's another very interesting one, and I think I'm going to get poo-pooed all over the place for this one. People are not going to like this uh, trade that I am about to say, but the Edmonton Oilers, everybody knows. I mean, you should know that uh, maybe you don't, but if you don't know, they're in cap hell. They're always in cap hell. Every year they're in cap hell because they have Dreisaitl and McDavid making large amounts of money, which they deserve. They have currently $7 million in cap space, and that doesn't include some very important players for them, like Evander Kane, who apparently wants to come back. Now, I'm hearing he'll take a deal. Maybe in the five and a half to six million range, but that only leaves you two million dollars, and you've got guys like Kaylor Yamamoto and Jesse Puglia Harvey that would be uh, that you probably won't be able to sign as restricted free agents or have a very difficult time doing so. So my here's my deal. Edmonton loves their draft picks. Loves, loves, loves. Puglia Harvey and Yamamoto for the second overall. You get both of them. Yamamoto's smaller. Puy Harvey's a big, a big boy. But I really wanted to talk about that this this way. And I, I don't know. I don't, maybe Edmonton Oilers fans don't even like this idea at all. They probably, you know, but I they poo poo all over Puy Harvey. Puy Harvey is going to be and already is one of the best two way young two way wingers in the game. He has problems scoring at the moment. But if you look at his history, he was a scorer all the way through. 31 points in, in the under-18s. Uh, 31 goals, that is. 12 goals in, in uh, 18 games for Carpat under 20. The guy has scored pretty much everywhere he is, he's gone. He's only 22 years old. And he's still putting up some pretty good, pretty good numbers for a guy who's only 22. 14 goals in 65 games. Not spectacular, but there's no reason to think he can't reach 30. But the thing is, and people do not believe me or agree with me at all, anybody who doesn't pay attention to analytics, I do, but I didn't need analytics to know this guy is never out of position. He is always in the right spot. He's not a heavy guy. He's not going to beat you down, but he He's great at using his stick to get and bodying people off the puck. Not heavy, not strong. He's the kind of guy, what I mean by not strong, not punishing is what I mean to say. He's not a punishing player. But he knows how to use his body to get people off the puck. He knows what position to be in all the time. He's a fantastic defensive player. And then you've also got Yamamoto. Now, Oilers fans, well, I'm not giving you both. Well, you're going to give up one. And I don't think you're going to get that. You're not getting a, a second overall in a draft for one of these guys. Maybe two. And you get a guy like Slipkowski. If Slipkowski turns out to be like Rantanen, in a couple of years you have a player that is under a uh, entry-level contract. That and Go look at Rantanen's numbers. And he came in the league and how he built himself up. You could have just an absolute stud of a winger to play with either McDavid or Drysaddle in two years that I will admit would be better than either one of these guys by a long shot, by a long shot. But both of those players for New Jersey would bring, would give you depth, just ridiculous depth. You could put Mercer down here to play with Bofus and Kalkinen. Put Puglia Harvey on here. If you trade Zaka and get your first, you put Yamamoto between Husher and Puglia Harvey. 
you've got one of the best two-way lineups in the league. I would definitely consider it. I don't know if New Jersey Devils fans would consider it, uh, but I am an Oilers fan. I can tell you Yamamoto and Pulley Harvey are going to be very, very, very good players. And I don't think the Oilers are giving, certainly not Pulley Harvey, anywhere near enough credit for how good he is. All right. Next, the Vancouver Canucks. And they want to change everything around in Vancouver, it seems like. They're looking at a whole different way of viewing things from when uh, Jim Benning was there. And it sounds like they're exploring all different types of options as far as trades are concerned. Now, I did a JT Miller trade video in there, and New Jersey was in there, so I've already kind of talked about it. JT Miller for the second pick. JT Miller can play center or left wing. He'd be playing left wing for, for New Jersey. He had a, almost a 100-point season last year. And he just seems to have gotten better all through his career. Will he get, have that 100-point season again? I'm not sure. I don't know. But if you want a guy that is pure offense and really is a rah-rah leader, which I do think that they could use in New Jersey, he is a guy that holds players accountable. And I don't really see a lot of that in New Jersey right now. I think Hughes will probably be one of those guys. But uh, he's a little young right now, so JT Miller could help Hughes along in that way. Now, of course, people are going to immediately say, Quinn Hughes, he can get all the people. No, no, Vancouver's not, you're not getting Quinn Hughes. You're not getting Quinn Hughes, no way, no way, no way. You're not getting Quinn Hughes, so you don't even think about it. You could get Brock Besser, though. And that's the player that I really think they'd be looking at, honestly is Brock Besser. Speed down the wing, right winger. He's got a killer shot. He's had a rough go with this. He had some family issues last year, so he didn't have the greatest year. You might even get be able to get more than Brock Besser for the second overall right now. I, I seriously think because he had a down year uh, last year, he only had 46 points. I think that's an aberration. And if New Jersey thinks that you know, he still can rebound easily in his career at 25 years old. And if you look at his shot and his speed and what that guy can do on the ice, there is no reason to think that that guy can't get back to it. He can't be a 35 to 40 goal scorer somewhere down the road, I believe. So if you think that and you can get him and possibly even another player or a prospect from Vancouver, let's look at their depth chart here from Vancouver for that second overall. If you think you're going to be wanting to win right away, you don't want to wait two years for Slavkovsky. You want to have a big shooter right now. You do that. Take him. Maybe Nils Hoglander. I don't know if they want to give up that much off their immediate roster. But uh, you look at their prospect pool. Uh, Jackson Coons. You know, somebody like that that's going to be ready in the next couple years or possibly a change of their first-round pick. Do they have their first-round pick this year? Yeah, take their first-round pick. Swap first-round picks and uh, get Brock Besser. Maybe a third or fourth or something like that, whatever makes it works. What makes it work. What do you think, New Jersey fans? What do you think, Vancouver fans? I think Vancouver fans, I, I, think, I don't know about the fans, but I think uh, the brass would like this idea because you they're starting to get more controlled contracts. Slavkowski would be a under a uh, in, um, un, under his initial contract, which would be very controllable for the next couple of years. And uh, they love their Europeans in Vancouver. If that is, in fact, the second overall pick, if, if it's not right. If it's right, then they take right. Even that would be great. Uh, so it'd be, their, it'd be his entry-level contract. Brock Besser can go off to other lands, and they can continue focusing on changing the whole landscape of, of the Vancouver Canucks, which I think is possible. And finally, we're going to look at, by the way, I'll look at the uh, cap space. 11 million in cap space and 
you know, they got big guys to sign. They got Horvat next year. Uh, that's going to be a big one. I do believe they want to keep Horvat, and they're going to want to fill out this defense somehow, some way. They got to fill out this defense. So, I think they'd love the, to have the cap flexibility, and they would definitely consider that. Minnesota Wild, and this is the big one that everybody's been talking about, is Fiala. And yes, Kevin Fiala for Minnesota. They, I mean, we we know. Look at Kevin Fiala's numbers here. Last year, he had thirty three goals, fifty two assists. His best year so far. He looked amazing. His shot is fantastic. He's smaller, yes, but if they're looking for a guy that can shoot out the lights, Fiala's certainly that guy. He can keep up with Hughes. He, he's got the speed to burn to play with anybody on that roster. He's going to need a contract. He's finishing up right now on a 3.5 year million base salary and he's 25 years old. I think if you're going to pick him up, you might as well sign him long term to like 6 million for 7 years or something of that nature and it could end up being a bargain for you. But if they're wanting to trade their first and they're wanting a goal scorer. I don't think Minnesota can sign them no matter what they do. I, I, they're in bad shape. They have what? Uh, let's see, twenty-three million left. How could that be? No, no, they don't. Sorry, seven million next year is twenty-three million left, and we know about those big contracts: seven million for. 14 million in cap, dead cap because of the Parise and Ryan Suter deals. And I mean, they could give them the 7 million right now, but how are they going to fill out their roster the next year when you got Boldy coming up? Um, Tyson Joseph isn't that big of a deal, but you got Matt Dumba's contract coming up. Uh, it's going to be tough. They could do it. They could do it, but from all accounts I'm hearing, they're not planning on doing it. It doesn't sound like they, for, for whatever reason, they want to sign Kevin Fiala. He's been out there over and over and over again. Now they could surprise everybody and sign him up. It's possible Fiala's looking for eight for long term. You know, it's possible that Fiala is wanting two years, which would bring him to an unrestricted free agent, and then they don't know they could lose him for nothing. So it's, uh, it's, it's a very difficult spot for the Minnesota Wild to be in. I understand the buyouts of the two players. They wanted that old regime out, some new blood to come in, and new thought processes coming in. They kind of wanted to shed themselves of their old ways of uh, doing business and uh, wanted to start things all anew. I think Jacob Middleton is a guy that they want to sign as well. So... It's, it's going to be some tough number crunching for them to keep Fiala. And if he's available, I think it's possible. Personally, I don't think I would. I think out of all of these that I went over, I would take Reinhardt from Florida if he was available. That's, that's the guy I would pick. Um, I just think for overall size, for the fact that he can play center and wing, uh, that his defensive, his D game is, is, up, is better than Fiala's. He brings a little more veteran leadership than Fiala does. I think that would be my guy. Tell me what you think, New Jersey fans. Do you think I'm crazy with all of this stuff? Maybe it doesn't even happen. I don't know. But it'll be interesting if it does. Sub yourself up, all of you Vancouver fans and everybody else. Comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.